Hello, welcome to the channel and thanks for watching. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I made my Underhive rail yard with a 3D printed armoured train, some cast up Zone Mortalis tiles, and other little Games Workshop pieces. Now this is the fourth video in this kind of little series. The first one was making the resin Zone Mortalis tiles, then it's been tile one, tile two. Now this is a tile three. This is a two foot by one foot tile, once it's slightly larger because of the armoured train that we're using. Now it's shorter video than the previous ones because some of the techniques I'm going to cover I've already kind of shown in those videos so check those out afterwards and I'll put the links down below. So you can see there I played before I start sticking anything down just getting the gist of how I wanted this armoured train to lay out across the rail yard and I then stuck down the resin casts on Mortalis tiles that I'd used across the two foot by one foot board. Now learning from that because I don't have any clamps or anything I've never bothered buying any when I was weighing these down, which you need to put pressure on with Gorilla Glue when you're sticking it, they shifted with all the weights, and obviously they shifted a bit more than the one by one tile because it's a larger surface area. Not a massive issue, we can recover it, but just bear that one in mind if you're doing this, be real careful about how they're gonna move. So the Gorilla Glue has burst out the seams because when you use it, it expands two to three times. So it's just a case of slicing this off and removing it. Um, the sort of weird clotty bits there was a bit of, put a bit of tissue paper down on one of the corners that was lifted just to push it down, put a, a, another weight on top. Um, and obviously that's stuck, not a problem, it's all removable. And again, every problem gives us uh, an opportunity to play with something else to create a solution. So I'm slicing up some Milliput here. This is black Milliput. I quite often use the white stuff, but it's exactly the same. I think it's just coloration for various projects you might want to be doing you might want it a certain color but it's a two-part epoxy kind of resiny stuff just mix it together um, and i'm using it to fill the gaps and it's really simple water on the sculpture until i'm using it and just push it into the gaps and cracks of this board and it sets absolutely rock solid uh, i also you'll see through this i've uh, done the excess of this mini put i've used to cast up some extra pieces and extra crates and things with some blue stuff that does get referenced in the background of the build so the 3D printed train. So I picked this up for a Wufu workshop, the company was called. Uh, I saw them on Instagram and things, and I've called it in a previous video that I've bought this, but really, really nice printed train actually, and with very, very little work to do to make it look really good. Hence why it is a little bit shorter <laughs> than normal. So the first thing to do is get in the tracks where I wanted to. Now I'd already played, as you saw in the first shot, with kind of how I wanted the tracks to run. My idea is, is that this is uh, an underhive loading dock, kind of area and the train brings in the goods that have come from the Imperium or takes away the goods that the hive cities of Necromunda are manufacturing so it's not so much a ruined hive section as we see quite a lot in Necromunda I wanted something with a bit more industrial feel a bit of a vibe for future gang plans that I've got and I'll reveal those on the channel at some point I'm sure now before I cut anything I just measured out the track and where I wanted it because the track was going to hang over the edge I just marked it with a hobby knife got my saw out and did that that little pot I'm cutting gathering the uh, filings into. Um, you will see in a future project the reason why I've been saving all the bits and cast-offs and little bits of sprue and all that kind of stuff into a little box. You'll see that on the channel at some point soon, I am uh, sure. So I've uh, chopped down the tracks so that it's going to not hang over the edge of the board and then I've started gluing down. Now in this case it's important to glue down from the edge that you've cut because that way you're going to guide yourself and not give yourself a problem later if you were to start sticking it down from like the left hand side you might get to where you've cut realize you're hanging over again or it's too short so just a bit of a tip when you are slicing these things down so it's a case of gluing them all down just with a super glue and getting this track laid out and sealed onto the board now i want this board to be quite static in a sense because everything i'm going to use is going to be glued down now if you wanted just to do some flat tiles and you want to do an armored trains you can move it about a lot less great but for me I wanted something that's I'm not going to play on it very often but I want it to be quite fixed but also lots of interesting bits of scenery. Now what I'm doing here is my thoughts where I wanted to use some of the uh, extra carriages you get with this armoured train on the scenery piece. Now when you see a real train yard you have these kind of weird junctions and things where they move off the trains and they move off the carriages and stuff off to one side and kind of store them there. So that's what this is going to kind of represent. Uh, just gluing the piece down again. You'll have seen as well I've been snippering off and removing the bolts that I put onto the Zone Mortalis tile. So if you watch the first Zone Mortalis video you'll see that I put bolts and stuff around as kind of how the tiles are fixed down to the underhive surface. Um, so I'm removing those just because the tracks were going across them but I did save them. You saw me earlier show a bolt. Save them for gluing onto later projects. So I've taken the off cut from the curved section because it curves and then goes sort of straight again. Cut it down, use that. And then with this set I've got you get these really cool little end stoppers like buffer things that obviously stop the trains and the carriages going off the track so uh, just gluing those down for when the 
courage goes on i think it's a really really nice little um 3d printed set this really nice very very little assembly to do you've just got the carriages to kind of glue down onto the uh, tracks as you've seen here now what i've done is i've put the wheel pieces down on the track first so they're lined up then lining up the actual carriage with the tracks and drop one that way not sure if that's the best or most efficient way to build them um, but because i'm going to be gluing these down into place i just wanted to make sure that everything lined up to each other that the buffers on each of the carriages lined up to each other there now if you were um, doing it multi-purpose you might want to leave these off whatever but i've sort of sealed them down um, and you have to very specifically do it the way i've done it i think because the carriage that i'm building now the kind of front of the train the track curves so it's important to get that curve into the wheels so just how i found it worked quite well you know lowering the carriages onto the wheels rather than the other way around so now onto a bit of a necromunda suit piece the, these are very very nice little pieces these thermic plasma regulators the cord you get two in the kit actually very cheaply priced for games workshop for the volume of plastic you get in there i do feel like quite unusual how some of their scenery stuff can be really good value at uh, these particularly so but if you looked when i was laying out the tile before and if you've watched the um tile making video you'll see i left sections where there were no kind of armor paneling or floor panelings and this was so i could put four tiles together like i've done here and almost make a square where there's nothing there and that's where i'm going to build up the little scenery interest pieces now what i want it to look like is that these trains are, will be diesel powered plasma powered whatever they're going to be but i wanted like a little reactor on the board and i'm going to run some cable in a second i'll show you how i've done that so it looks like these are kind of powering up the trains or just powering up the general area um and it's a real nice little piece of kit um and it's got a little platform you'll see and again just to give a little bit of height to some of the builds now you'll notice with the three tiles i've done so far if you watch at the end and you see them put together there's not a huge amount of height in this board so far there's kind of a couple of levels but it's fairly low down because the idea is although i'm doing a two by two at the moment just to play on the hobby table uh, in the gaming room as i said because you know that's what i want to do with gaming gaming tables in the garage too far too cold i just want to play in the hobby room so it's only going to be a two by two but i am going to expand that later on when it starts warming up so i'm going to go to like a you know probably a four by four maybe even a six by four combine it into my 40k table as well so i didn't want too much height in this build but you can't do necromunda with no height especially when you're playing in a, a normal game and you're not playing zone or talis where you'd expect it to be kind of in the tunnels so that little platform just adds a little bit of extra height and obviously in the game you can be climbing on top of the carriages and that kind of thing as well so um i've just cut out a square of plastic hard now nice textured plastic art which is what i made the actual original zone mortalis tiles out of um, just for it to mount on and that covers those little four squares where there's no kind of floor tiles gives that bit of detail now just super gluing this down um, this would be an ideal piece i suppose to not stick down and you could have this as scattered terrain on your 40k boards or to use anywhere else but for me i just wanted it again sealed down so um, bear in mind each part of these builds you could skip steps and not glue things down um, but i just wanted it quite you know static now when we built this kit together as I said before, I wanted it to be wired into the train system so that it looks like it's powering it. So all I've done now is taken some green stuff and made it into like a little bit of sausage there. Now, normally you would use the uh, roller that I've got here, which is a green stuff wood roller, and put the green stuff into it, but I wanted slightly longer pieces. So this way around, I've just taken the actual part of this roller and rolled it onto the green stuff rather than putting the green stuff into the roller. It makes a nice effect, like a nice ridge power cord effect. Now, if you haven't got a little green stuff will roll the kit like i've got there tentacle maker it's called you can do that same process with any bit of ridged plastic you can do it with a comb or whatever and again i've got a video for doing that down below if you want to see how to make um, power cables and that kind of thing but i'm just making two or three just to spread across the board um, use a bit of a end of a sculpting tool to press it into the bit of scenery you want it to look like it's linking and powering and i've just done two or three of those linking various bits of the board to the train track and i've left a cable loose just to put a little bit of visual interest now you could go crazy you could start putting little um, control panels and extra pieces but i just want it fairly simple but quite effective now i'm just putting down some bits of sand and pva in various patches across the board just to blend it in i said before about using the milliput and green stuff you can see there bottom corner a little black piece of milliput um, crate and a green stuff crate as well so whenever you're using milliput or green stuff try not to waste it always have some little molds or other things you could make out of it so you're not getting any wastage so now i've undercoated the board and the scenery um, pieces with black spray and then with lead belch to put the metallic effect and i'm just going to very quickly whiz through the painting process now i'm not going to go really into depth with um, the particular techniques i'm doing because i've shown that in previous videos but just to give you a, 
kind of tone. The reason I love Nick Arunda, um for painting wise is because you can make it messy and it kind of fits in. Uh, the beauty of, I suppose, undercoating metallic once you've put a black base coat down is you can be quick, be slightly messy, deliberately leave bits showing so that it makes the area rusty, battered looking. So whatever colours we're putting down, you know, don't be too precious about covering everything. It makes it sort of fit into the environment. It, it's really nice for that. So I'm just using the colours to really blend in with what I've done so far on the board. So I'm doing the train mostly orange because... For some reason I picked that colour when I was doing the mechanics kind of workshop in the first instance. And to my mind is anything that's going to be either mechanical or look like it's done by a particular guild, maybe a transport guild, is going to go in this orange colour. Now I've picked up the typical mechanicus red for parts of the train, for part of that plasma vent area and the fuel barrels. Now these containers, I don't really know what they're supposed to be on this armoured train, but in my mind these are water containers, this is water being brought into the underhive. So I'm going to do that blue and that will give me some opportunity to do some of the really cool water guild models maybe in future. Now in the previous video I showed you how I made this little line guide in the first video, um, just out of plastic card. And what I want to do is mark off the areas where I think the um, train tracks are going to move to link together to each other so I've literally just used that line guide from above and just roughly stabbed those lines on there. Now when I did these the first time in the first kind of board they didn't quite like the final effect that I did so I'm just going over them with a bit of silver there just to battle them up a little bit before we um, finish it off. Now all my Necromunda models have this exact same wash put on them um, to really dirty them down. It's a Vallejo sepia wash, any wash would do. But I'm going to treat the terrain exactly like I would treat my models. Try and do the same sort of painting steps because then it's hopefully all going to blend in together. And actually you could leave, and I say this every time when I do a paint scheme with this wash, you could leave it at this stage, um, not do anything else extra on top of the wash, and it would look absolutely fine. And with scenery there's probably even more reason not to bother. But you saw there that I'm just going back over in a couple of places with some of the colours and just a quick dry brush over the top to lift those um, scenery up. So we're at the final stages now. Now one thing I have done is I've put the tile I'm just doing now together with one of the previous tiles and just trying to make sure that we're making the tiles match together as close as possible. You're always going to have slight variables. And then, like I said before, I'm going to glue all the scenery down. So again, put everything where I want it. Put the scatter terrain that we painted before, some of the armoured um, barrels and the little containers there. Put them where you think it's going to work. And for me, it was more about giving cover to the fighters when we're going to be playing a game on it with, a, with an eye to thinking can you they sprint in between one set of cover to the other and kind of use the terrain in that sense and just gluing it down did make a slight mistake because you'll see there's three barrels in that second um, trailer that's attached to the train and I was going to glue them in there but I kind of forgot I was doing that and I glued them onto the board in a minute as you'll see but again um, in an area that will work quite nicely and I've just put a little mechanic mechanics toolkit onto those hash markings to make it look like he's you know doing a bit of maintenance work on the train while it's parked um sort of in this train yard so that's kind of the build this was a fairly simple one it was more about quickly painting up 3d printed models um lovely 3d print models this i do find the paint goes down very differently to a normal model which has been interesting for me so there's a the finished board again not going to show the full footage uh, just show an example there of how the three boards i've done so far fit together from a couple of different angles and you know what the dynamic of what these boards look like changes completely if you were to flip one little 12 inch by 12 inch section so i will be coming back to this board again soon it will be being expanded to probably to a six by four for the garage but for now i'm just going to play on this game with it how it is just have fun with it so i hope you liked that video like comment subscribe all that youtube jazz and hopefully i'll see you another time